Okay, YouTube, this is, is an install of a Core i3 on a Gigabyte H55M S2V board. And the typical problem with these is it feels really weird when installing the CPU. So I just wanted to show you guys that it's okay when installing the CPU. That it's all right to put some tension on it, even though it feels like it's going to break. Me personally, I don't like the design, but it works. Uh, you just set the CPU in there, so I kind of move it around a little bit. You just line the notches up, also. Just line the notches up on both sides. Zoom in a little bit. You got two notches on each side here. And you got a notch on each side of the CPU. You just line them up. Make sure not to touch the bottom of that. And I just wiggle it a little bit, make sure it's in there really good. Put the back plate down and push this lever down. And this thing is, it is tight. It is really, really tight. I mean, I am, it, it feels as if I'm going to break it, but I know I'm not. And I mean, I'm applying a lot of pressure. This is a lot of pressure. So, and it is in there it's not going anywhere with that amount of pressure i know it scares most people because hell it scared me the first time that i did it and from there you put your thermal paste whatever you use me i use this almond thermal paste i prefer this because when installing it you don't have to worry about putting a little bead and spreading it out with a credit card or anything you get a nice even coat with this with the, by using a brush. So as you can see, you don't have to be a professional to use this. You get a nice thin layer and it doesn't look like a kid installed the damn CPU when they um, go to take it off. Look at that nice smooth layer. And if you go over that a couple of times, I like to see you get that smooth of a layer first try with a, in that sort of a time period with a simple, um, with a simple um, credit card. It's going to take some time and some skill. So I prefer the Zalman Super Thermal Grease. It, it's expensive. It runs about 11 bucks, but it, to me, it's well worth it, and it stands up. I was a big user of the, um, the, 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 the most expensive stuff out there, and it worked pretty good. I have no complaints of it. I still keep a tube of that in there, too, also, but um, this stuff works just, just as good. I use it on i3s, i7s, the old um, Pentium 4s. It works really good. Um, when I go to take it off and up, update it or something, and it still holds its own, in my opinion. And I'm about to get ready to apply. And then, as you see on the heat sink, I'm not a big fan of usually using um, the manufacturer heat sink just because look at the size of this thing. You know, it's it's going to do okay for cooling, this i3, but I'm just not a huge fan of it. So... What I would do in this case is I would get some alcohol and just remove the thermal piece off of here and apply that same thermal dissolving grease to here. It usually comes off pretty easily. And 
and just clean that up really well and put a, a nice smooth layer of the almond super grease or whatever you're using onto the heat sink. The same way that you did to the CPU. Just a nice smooth layer. Going a couple of different directions. Even long strokes. You don't want globs of this stuff. The point of it is to transfer heat. And not to put globs of it on there. It's a beginner's mistake. Another mistake is people like to turn these when installing the CPU. There's no need to turn these. You turn these when you get ready to take this apart, not when you're installing it. So when you get ready to install it, all you do is hot damn it. Well, you don't drop it. That's one thing you don't do. Put that on back on there. You fixate it on there, and you just simply pop them in one corner at a time, like so. And I usually just cross corner opposite ends. And this is Robert with GenXComputers.com. If you like, please subscribe. More videos will be coming. Thank you.